Welcome. We have the fifth Sunday of Lent for you. Divine service setting four. We're on page 203 if you're in the hymnal. And we have our bulletin available at the church website. There'll be a link on the page so you can go get the bulletin if you want to follow along there. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered together to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our own unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from this, our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children, and you gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ears to me. Therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. For you have delivered my soul from death. My eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. And he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves, and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves, 
and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Romans, the eighth chapter. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped the cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace, peace, and mercy to you from the resurrection and the life, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is from the epistle. To set the mind in the flesh is death, but to set the mind in the spirit is life and peace. Now, in times of trial, uh, the mind of the flesh naturally turns to a particular line of questioning. It begins with, why are we suffering this? And moves to, whose fault is it that we're suffering this? And then wonders, are we being judged? You know, when the storm rose and Jonah was hidden in the hold of the boat, those are the questions the crew began asking. And they cast lots and determined by the lots that it was Jonah's fault. He was being judged. He bore the guilt and he was thrown into the sea. Now, when Job was facing afflictions, one after another, his friends came and I think they intended to counsel him and comfort him, but they tormented him, trying to pick at the scabs of his conscience. And over and over they probed, what has Job done that he has deserved this judgment, this condemnation? But in another storm, the Lord proved them wrong. Job's Redeemer lives, and the faithful servant bore no blame. Now, when pestilence fell on Israel, death reigned for three days, taking 70,000 lives. And the prophet Gad came and spoke so that it was known truly. It was David's pride. He was being judged and condemned for numbering up his power in a census that led to the Lord's discipline and then the Lord's subtraction. So under the Old Covenant, the prophets walked the land and they answered those questions. They drew these lines of justice clear where men had tried to muddy them. It was not just anyone who could stand up and with the authority of God say, thus saith the Lord. When Job's miserable counselors tried to do that, not only did they fail, but God came and corrected them, answering in power. So if the prophets were watchmen standing in towers of God's word, looking down on history from above, why is it that they were able to do this? It's not that they were wiser or, or more perceptive as human beings. The Lord gave them judgment so his people could know the truth. The prophet was installed on high by God to point the way of life. So what if today? Is there a prophet in the land who can tell us who has angered the Lord so that pandemic has fallen on us? Well, there are certainly many who will claim the mantle, but they do not speak with one voice. There are those who stand on their soapbox and they say it's because of Wall Street. Uh, people who play games with people's retirements, those who are delighting in greed, they finally called down wrath from above. Uh, that's not the only target. Uh, there are those who condemn Washington. And we can find corruption in every party. <laughs> and not just those in party in power. How many of us have claimed that we wished we could just burn it all down? Can judgment be getting what we asked for? There are those who condemn the church. The church was quick to sell our birthright of grace for the porridge of friendship with the world. But let me ask this. Have any of these presumptive prophets shifted targets, been given new insight by what's been going on lately? Or are they just casting the same stones that they were casting back on New Year's Day? Has our current trial just amplified frustration and rage in these condemnations? There has been no true prophet in the land with authority to reveal God's judgment on nations or kings for many years. We do not live under the old covenant. A new covenant has been made and it is changing everything, thanks be to God. If you remember back to the beginning of the Gospels, John the Baptist, he prophesied a coming judgment. He said the axe was laid at the root of the tree and Israel herself could be judged with what came next. But John was the last prophet of the old covenant and there was one who followed after John who also prophesied one more final judgment. This other was an unusual prophet. When they brought a woman to him caught in adultery, he did not condemn her. Instead, he offered that whoever was without sin should cast the first stone. 
again and again in place of judgment, he spoke decrees of mercy. He brought mercy to those who were ill-prepared hosts for his first miracle, turning water into wine. He brought mercy to a befuddled old teacher so that he might be born again. He brought mercy to a sinful Samaritan at Sychar's well. He brought mercy to a man born blind. He even brought mercy to dead Lazarus. But he did also proclaim a judgment, a condemnation. He said the Messiah must die. He taught that God's own son must suffer. He decreed his own destruction. And he did not say he had deserved it. No, no. He was and is the sinless one. He didn't just point the way from the tower. He lived the way. He is the way. And so when he takes guilt and blame on himself, there's only one way for us who would call ourselves after him, Christians, to follow in his way. We must take guilt. We must take blame on ourselves. We cannot run and hide like Jonah in the hold of the boat, and we dare not join the chorus of condemnations seeking someone else to be our scapegoat. Now, Jesus was once asked about a particular time of trial, if he could see how judgment was falling in that trial. You can read about it in Luke 13. And he asked, were these people on whom this tower fell, as if an accident or maybe the hand of God, were they worse sinners than all the rest? Is that why it happened? And he answered his own question for us. No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. When we see tragic death, Jesus teaches, don't blame others. Look into your own heart. Take the blame onto yourself. We repent. For which of us can escape death? Now, I've been teaching the kids in children's sermon when they are washing their hands to praise the Lord during that 20 seconds of hand washing. But now I'm speaking to those who are mature. As we also scrub our hands again and again, as we are leaving shoes outside the house for fear of tracking in pestilence on their souls, as we disinfect milk jug handles, as we expend so much effort to slow death's momentum, we should be examining our own hearts in those moments, not just 20 seconds, but all that cleansing time. Look at the place where death found its first foothold. Create in me a new heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. In 1 Peter 4, the wise apostle says, It is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. It begins with us, who are of God's own house, his children. We can take it, because judgment means something different for those of us who live blessedly under the new covenant. There's a reason there has not been sent a prophet into the land since the one who spoke the complete word of God, Jesus. There's a reason God does not point the divine finger at one king or one nation, and it's not because our kings or presidents are less sinful than those who went before. No. Paul trumpets this beautiful reason in our epistle reading. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, judgment used to equal condemnation. If you were judged guilty, you were condemned to punishment. They realized you couldn't do the job, they replaced you. But Jesus has flipped this script. He took the judgment for us, the condemnation for us, the punishment for us on the cross. But from all of that, he rose again. And so he's defanged the snake. Now that if judgment locks its jaws upon you, it still smarts to be told you did something wrong. But the teeth are gone, the venom long gone. There is no condemnation. The righteous requirement of the law he has fulfilled. Now, Jesus has handed over to us his blessed innocence. He gives it to us so that the edge that comes towards us is not the reaper's sight, but the surgeon's healing scalpel. The hammer following is not the cruel cudgel, but the sculptor's chisel. Judgment without condemnation does not kill, but gives us the space to grow. So, does pandemic mean judgment? Surely it does. 
All that is wrong in this world reveals the judgment that is on this fading world. It could be a paper cut, a jammed toe, all the suffering and misery, no matter how small or large, it must teach us, I need to repent because this whole house is burning down. But the condemnation of that judgment our Lord Jesus has taken for us. Any desire we have then to pass the buck onto an enemy, that's the mind of the flesh that Paul is warning about in our epistle reading. Paul has taught us to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit, this is life and peace, brothers and sisters. So I've told you to take the time of cleansing hands and germs to cleanse your heart also. But don't stop there. Don't stop at the scrubbing. When your labor has finished, you won't even know if there was anything there in the first place that you've tracked into your home. And if you had, if any still remains, we don't have the scientific equipment to check in our own homes. But we do know this. Jesus has given us the spirit. We have the spiritual, not just equipment, but the friend, the beloved, the spirit telling us you can rest in your spiritual cleansing because Jesus has completed it. He has cleaned your sin away perfectly. None of that infection of the soul remains where you are forgiven. And that word there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. In that we can rest. His outspour, outpouring of his spirit of grace, it truly does give life and give peace. And Jonah, he bore their guilt, but emerged in three days. Job, he bore all those afflictions and he was restored in the end. David gave his throne over to pestilence for three days, but the angel of the Lord had mercy and passed over the holy city. Do you see these prophets? They're not just standing in towers, pointing the way, drawing bare geometry of justice. Their lives were drawing pictures, paintings of the Savior to come. Jesus has risen from the depths on the third day. He brings the restoration of all. He sits on David's throne forevermore. He brings us to the city that will face no death, no destruction, even the opposite of social distancing because we will finally gather in perfect love and harmony. Set your minds on these things, for in them you do not just have promises for the future. Well, thanks be to God we have those too. To set the mind on the spirit is life and peace today. Life and peace for you now. The law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. We come, O Lord, as dry bones. Bind us up in Christ, that we may learn to pray with confidence, trusting your mercy to supply us with all things needful to us and to our salvation. Almighty God, everlasting Father, you saw Israel in their despair and raised them up to hope by placing your spirit upon them. Join us together with the communion of saints in Christ, even though we must for a time stand apart. Raise us up from our weariness and grant us your spirit, that we may be strong in faith, bold in witness, holy in life, and steadfast in hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O eternal Lord, your Son has given us the new birth of water and the word, and planted faith in us, that we might be your own children. Bless your church, supply her with able, fearless, and caring pastors to nurture us in your word. Raise up faithful fathers and those who will teach and pray in your name in every Christian household. Keep your church in your mercy, that she may believe without fear and love without limit even now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of power and might, you hold in your hand all the might of man. Give to us good government and faithful leaders who will heed your word and pursue righteousness and justice. Bless and defend us against all destruction, especially from this deadly pandemic, and teach us to be patient and faithful citizens of this land, using ourselves and our resources wisely for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. O merciful Lord, your son shed tears for Lazarus, whom he loved. Grant your compassion, patience, and endurance to all who suffer illness, who are troubled in mind, or whose time on earth is short. Spare us from death now, but give us courage and comfort far stronger by your power over death. Eternal God, you carry the grief of those who mourn and remember all who die in Christ. Give comfort to the grieving and peace to the dying, and give that same comfort and peace to us who live in the shadow, in fear of death, that we would neither live nor grieve as people without hope, but trust in you at every hour. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O gracious God, you daily and richly grant us all things we need for this body and life. Bless our labors and grant us wisdom to use the fruits of those labors wisely and well. For the care of our families, for the poor and their needs, and for the support of your work in this congregation. Preserve us from fear and greed as we live and work alone, and turn us instead in love toward our neighbors, however distant. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O blessed Lord, your word continues to go forth and bear good fruit. Bless the missionaries planting churches near and far. Bless those churches with whom we partner in the worldwide work of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord God Almighty, through your Son you have kept the promise of the ages and rescued us from sin. You raised up the dry bones of a people captive to death and made us alive in Christ forever. Sustain us in this hope that we may endure the tests, trials, and troubles of this life and be ready when our Savior comes again in his glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Join in prayer as, as we pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.